it's the 23rd of December and look at the snow. It's our first snow of the year here in Riverport. Perfect timing because we were looking at a green Christmas. Anyway, enough of that. The point is, we finished the big deadline on site yesterday and so I'm off for the holidays. I can do some Christmas shopping, maybe tomorrow, but more importantly, I'm going to spend all of next week in the shop working on the truck. So stay tuned and Merry Christmas. See ya. Okay, so I'm setting up the clutch. I've got the engine back out because uh, I'd only done sort of a uh, test fit install and now I've got to put everything together to run. So I put the clutch on and I had to put a new pilot bushing in. The uh, kit from Advanced Adapters for the 3550 to Chevy 4.3 or small block Chevy adapter kit needs a new pilot bushing because the pilot shaft on the 3550 is a little bit bigger, quite a bit bigger actually. So I had to pull the old one out with a slide hammer and drive the new one in. I like to drive a pilot bushing in with basically a set of sockets. One that just fits inside the pilot bushing and one that fits against the face of it. And that way I can make sure that as I drive it in, I'm not pushing on one side too much or the other or I slip off. I just drive it straight in. Anyway, worked well. Went like a charm. See ya. Just want to recap on the adapter. The uh, 4.3 to New Venture 3550, just regard all the junk on top of it here, uh, adapter is basically a bell housing. So it's a Chevy bell housing on this side and a Jeep bell housing on the back. And it required a few different pieces. Actually, it takes a custom fork for the throwout bearing. It uses a, a Toyota throwout um, slave cylinder, clutch slave cylinder, uh, which they uh, have set it up for, but you buy this separately. And it uses a Ford, believe it or not, throwout bearing, which is a perfect fit with the fork and the uh, snout of the 3550. The one thing you do have to do is shorten the throwout bearing carrier, which is basically the tube that the carrier that the throwout bearing is riding on, that the that the input shaft is inside. You have to shorten that by about an inch, and uh, the exact measurement comes with the specifications with the kit. But uh, that's a piece of cake. You basically unbolt it off the back, take it off, put it in a vise, and cut it out. Anyway, so I'm just bolting it up now, and uh, we'll have the engine in here shortly. See ya. When you're bolting this bow housing up to the transmission, make sure you don't forget that there's one bolt actually behind the uh, clutch fork. I knew it was there, but I still almost forgot it. Well, it's Christmas Day and I'm back in the shop. I can't think of a better thing to do. Well, there's lots of better stuff to do on Christmas Day, but a nice treat to yourself if you have that sort of lull in the middle of the afternoon waiting for the turkey is get a few things done on the rover. And I'm having a ball in here. Uh, just the other day, this rover was over there, piled up with all kinds of crud. Seeing as my main business is a design and construction company, this shop is often used for carpentry, storage, repairs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but over the Christmas holidays, it's going to be to build this truck, which is really great. So I put everything together pretty much, but I had to take it all apart again because it was really just a mock-up. So now I'm putting everything back together properly. Got the engine out, got the, the uh, bulkhead off, and uh, just putting the clutch back in and starting to put everything back together properly. Anyway, over the next week or so, this should be pretty close to a running truck. I hope. See ya. One thing you may have noticed, and I think I mentioned it before, was with the stock oil filter down here um, and the headers, the very tight block hugging headers, and the frame rail on the Land Rover, there was no way I'd ever be able to change an oil filter on this in place. Well, there are an abundance of uh, aftermarket remote oil filter adapters. However, I found them kind of frustrating because... When you put the adapter on the engine, the hoses point down. And the adapter that holds the filter up on the engine bay, on the firewall somewhere, or the bulkhead in our case, the hoses point up. So you've really got quite a twist of hose to get it to go up there. And this hose, well, I won't say it kinks easily, but it's not ideal. So what I'm going to have to arrange is some kind of 90 degrees. Come out here, up on an angle, and then 90 degrees come back in there. And even if I can get them in brass, they're still going to be pipe fittings, because this is half inch pipe fitting. But it should work. Okay, so the motor's back in. Um, this is really tight in here. Uh, I don't know if I explained this to you guys before, but uh, to keep the motor in the standard Land Rover position, in other words, hard over to the driver's side, um, I really had to get quite tight with this motor mount, and it's a bit of a trick to put in. However, it's certainly way easier than lots of cars I've worked on. I'm sure it's easier than changing the motor mounts on, say, some kind of Hyundai or something. Anyway, you can't remove the headers with the engine in place, but you can roll them out of the way, which is nice because that way you can get at the motor mount. And so that will just sit in there nice, really tight. It's these headers that make this swap possible because, of course, they're very, very tight block hugging headers. They're designed like this for um, like 32 Ford Roadsters where the steering gear comes right down past on this side. Uh, but it happens to work out very handy for Land Rovers that have the frame rail weight in this place. 
Um, we're going to be a little tight getting at those fittings for the oil uh, filter adapter, but it's going to work, and it's certainly better than trying to change the filter in there at any time in the future. Good. So let me bolt this stuff up, and I'll put the bulkhead back on. See ya. Okay, time to do some brakes. I'm using a Cupro Nickel uh, on this truck. It's uh, a copper nickel alloy that's effectively rust-proof and very malleable, nice to work with. I'm also using um, brass brake lines from Holden. Actually, the Cooper Nickel line also came from Holden in the UK. And uh, these are really nice. Now, of course, because they're brass, you got to be careful you don't strip them. But at the same time, they're so beautifully machined, I find they fit in a, in a 7 16 wrench so very, very well that it's almost impossible to strip as long as you're relatively calm with them. Anyway, I'm going to flare up a couple of lines, double flare of course. Uh, I'm doing the rear right now, and the rear don't have any of those strange bubble flares, so they're just standard double flares, so we'll get going on that. I don't know how much of this I'm actually going to show you. Uh, we'll work through. I imagine you're all used to doing standard double flares. Basically, you set up the height of the pipe, or the tubing, in the gauge with a little shoulder on the bottom of the uh, flare tool and then tighten it in good and tight. I like to tighten the t side that's closest to the tubing first so that the other side gets a little more mechanical advantage. After having cut the tubing, the um, copper, no, copper nickel, or the, the metal in general, has been uh, squeezed in at the end. There's a little bit of flash on the inside, so take that out just with a drill. You could use a little reamer or whatever you are. I just touch it with the drill and then we're set. At the end of course once the line is made I run compressed air through it so that there's no chance any um, swarf or anything is in it. So we'll just flare this first side down. This is an ancient flaring tool I bought when I was about 15 years old. It's still working fine. I have to buy new inserts for it every couple of years. When you're making the first part of the flare remember don't go too far. Just turn it until you just start to feel the resistance. Otherwise you could end up cracking it, although with the Cooper Nickel, it's pretty nice stuff to work with. Uh, I won't bring the camera over to see it, but that's a nice start to the flare. Again, this is not a brake flaring tutorial. And we'll finish the other side of that. Of course, one thing you always got to make sure of when you're making brake lines is uh, put your fittings on before you flare both ends. It's amazing how often I forget that. There we have a nice flare. I like to run my thumb over it just to make sure there's no uh, tears on it or splits. Um, it's just an easy way to see. And we're good. Take the fitting on, slide it on right off the bat. Very nice. Put another one on the other way. Again, before we do the other flare, and we'll carry on. Anyway, check in later. See ya. Okay, so throttle linkage. Um, of course, we're 4.3 Chevy on this end, and I'm going to use the 4.3 Chevy um, cable uh, throttle cable. Uh, so it has a mount that's already ready to go. The, this little clevis here uh, I had to make because there must have been something similar to it, and it was missing when I set it all up. So this is going to swing around and basically down right through there somewhere, but exactly where I don't know yet, and I'll tell you why. What I've done is I've taken the uh, stock Land Rover uh, gas pedal. And I took two of these brackets. I don't know if you can see. This is the standard uh, clamp, or uh, basically it's the bracket with a with a pivot hole in it for the shaft shaft that would go through right here, as you all know, out to be the standard throttle linkage. Well, that's all sealed up with my uh, lining. So basically, I took two of these brackets back to back, and the short shaft, so the hole doesn't go through anymore. But actually, the spacing, if you use this two sets of holes, these are the original sets of holes for the bracket, and these are the sets of holes for the uh, bulkhead upright. So the two brackets, the spacing tends out to be perfect for the pedal to just sit in between. There's a bit of an alignment issue because I haven't really tightened it up, but anyway. And then I've just made this temporary bracket up here off the top of this bolt, and then uh, because it's slotted, I can start to experiment with the total travel I'm going to need up here. So somewhere about there, I'm going to poke through with my cable and it'll come through into this bracket. This is only temporary, I'll make another one once I know exactly how long I want it to be. So I base this whole thing on about two inches of uh, pedal travel which is what I have in my blazer. I forget what Landovers actually have. I've never really had one that was ideal. And the throttle cable wants an inch and a half, which is about just about at the top here of travel. So basically I'm going to drill a hole at whatever point this gives me an inch and a half travel, pop the cable through, and we're all set. See ya. And well, throttle's done.
good enough for now. Make a new uh, arm on that uh, in the near future, and uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. See ya.